Welcome back. The objective of this video is to graph an exponential function and a logarithmic function, or the inverse of the exponential, uh, given a table of values. And we'll explore that table of values and come up with the equation and uh, evaluate uh, both the uh, exponential and the logarithmic equations. Recall, however, in an exponential function, y equals a times b to the x. We have a horizontal asymptote at, at uh, y equals 0, and the, the function is increasing, and it's going to go through the point zero, 01. But when we start moving it around and doing transformations, of course, that's going to change things. So we're going to use the table below to answer the following questions. So we've got our table for x and g of x here. And the first question, a, says, Describe the end behavior of the function. So that's describing the limit of the function as x goes to positive infinity. So we can see here as x goes to positive infinity, our y's are increasing and they continue to go on. So the answer to that is positive infinity. And then the limit of g of x as x goes to negative infinity, as you can see here, our y's are going to 1 and 1 half and 1 and an eighth and 1.008. So this is getting closer and closer to y values of 1. But we're approaching y equals 1 from the top. So what has happened to our graph, instead of the y's approaching 0, now they're approaching 1. That means we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1, which means we have been shifted up a plus 1 unit. So that tells us, <coughs> excuse me, what's the value of k? Give a reason. Well, our k is equal to 1 because the graph is shifted up 1 unit. or essentially the limit of g of x as x approaches negative infinity is equal to 1. Therefore, we now know that on our function g of x, our k value is 1. And that's going to help us find the rest of the values in the function. Question C says, output values change proportionally as input values increase in equal length intervals. Use this fact to determine the base of the function. So we do have some equal intervals here from like 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 equal x inputs. Well, what's happening to y? It looks like this is an increase of 1 half, and then an increase of 1, then an increase of 2, then an increase of 4, then an increase of 8, and then an increase of 16. So we might notice here that our increases, 1 half is 2 to the negative first. So we've got 2 to the negative first, and then we've got 2 to the 0, and 2 to the first, 2 to the second, 2 to the third, etc. So our, the base of our function appears to be 2. So our base equals 2. And so that means in our function, g of x equals b to the x minus h plus k. Now we know b is 2. And we also know that k is 1. We are asked, indeed, to use the point 4, 3, b, and k that we have from c to find the value of h. Then write the equation for the function g of x. So g of x equals b, our base, 2 to the x minus h, g of x is our y, or I'll put plus 1. Now we want to use the point 4, 3 for x, 4 for x, and 3 for y. So we can say 3 equals 2 to the x, or 4 minus h, plus 1. So I subtract 1 from both sides. 3 minus 1 is 2, and I get 2 to the 
4 minus h. So 2 to the first equals 2 to the 4 minus h, which means 1 has to equal 4 minus h. So h has to equal 3. Since h is equal to 3, now I know that my function in the end here, because I have all my values, this is going to be a little scrunched, but g of x equals 2 to the x minus 3 plus 1 is our function g of x. We're asked to state the domain and range of g, g of x. Well, g of x is 2 to the x minus 3 plus 1. Well, 2 to the x, our domain is all real numbers and our range is all the y's greater than or equal to 0. But now that we've we've taken our graph and we've shifted it up one unit and all these points have been shifted three units to the right, our new graph is going to look something like this. So we can see our domain is of the blue is still all real numbers. So we can say our domain goes from negative infinity to infinity. But our range has been shifted up one unit. We don't have any y's now less than 1. And since I don't have any y values below 1, our range goes from 1 to infinity. And in f, we're asked to find the equation for the inverse of x. So in red, I'll flip my x's and y's from my g of x function and we will solve for y. So I'll subtract 1 from both sides and I'll get x minus 1 equals 2 to the y minus 3. And I'll convert to logarithmic form. So log base answer equals exponent. So the log base 2 with an answer of x minus 1 equals an exponent of y minus 3. So then I can add 3 to both sides and get log base 2 of x minus 1 plus 3 equals y, which is now the inverse of g of x. In a quick comparison of our transformations, we see our original function was shifted three units to the right and up one, or our x's changed three and our y's changed one. Now in the inverse, our y's shifted up three and our x's shifted to the right one. So again, the flipping of the x's and y's in the inverse function. In G, we want to graph G of X and the inverse of G of X on the grid. So we're asked to find X and the inverse of G of X. And I filled in the X values that I'm going to use because I'm going to try and force this quantity of X minus 1 to be some sort of base 2 number. So I'd love this to be um, 2 and 4 and 8 uh, and 16 and so forth. And so that's why these X values are what they are. So I have log base 2 of 2 minus 1, or log base 2 of 1, which is 0, and then plus 3, and I get 3. And then 3 minus 1 is 2, log base 2 of 2 is 1, 1 plus 3 is 4. And then x of 5 give me, gives me log base 2 of 4, which is 2 plus 3 is 5. And then I chose an x of 9, because 9 minus 1 is 8. So log base 2 of 8 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. And then, uh, and then I put 17 in, and I get 7. So now I'll go ahead and plot these on the coordinate plane and take a look at our graphs. So I have my table of values for the inverse of g of x. So when x is 2, y is 3. So I plotted those in black. and created my inverse function. And then for just g of x, I can flip all these, can't I? So for g of x, when x is 3, 
y is 2. And when x is 4, y is 3. And when x is 5, y is 5. And when x is 6, y is 9. And when x is 7, y is 17. So my blue dots are the inverse or the, the, the original function. And I get a graph that looks like that. So the blue one is g of x, and the black one is the inverse of g of x. And I just graphed my blue graph by um, flipping my x's and y's. And then finally, we're asked to state the domain of the inverse of g of x. So our domain, it looks like our x's, we don't have any x's that are negative. So our domain goes from 0 to positive infinity. And our range will go from negative infinity to positive infinity. And if we wanted to do the domain and range for g of x, well, we could just flip these guys. So our range for g of x is going to be from 0 to infinity, while our domain goes from negative infinity to infinity. And that does coincide with what our graphs are. So we'll get some more practice with graphing logarithmic functions and their inverses when I see you in class.